Welcome to PNG 2009 Power Plant Management. Uh, in this course we do some simulation work. First step will be to start up our MC90V cold chip. Uh, part 1 according to the ONM manual is first start to own supply. First start to own supply takes us through a series of actions. Uh, first one is to prepare start the emergency generator. Ask me to go to 78. Uh, I may be able to do that better on page 70. I'm going to turn on my voltage control. I'm going to start my generator. I'm going to put them into auto. I may double check to make sure that I have fuel. I have lube oil and my cooling water is circulating. And if that's the case, it looks like my generator has now got up to speed, producing voltage, and has connected across to the emergency bus bar. have a low voltage alarm on my batteries so as I start to energize systems through my breaker panels uh, one of the things that I will turn on would be my battery charger so I'm gonna go ahead and start step 2 engage breakers on my emergency switchboard MD 73 you can see as I went through I turned on my battery chargers which will help with my low voltage condition. Transformer to allow a 220 volt system or a lower voltage system. As well as my DC system. Step number two, fill the emergency air receiver on page 59. Emergency air compressor is here. I just supplied power to it. I'll need to make sure he's in local mode for his initial start. I'll create a pathway to the emergency receiver and I'm going to turn him on. I'm going to monitor to make sure that I don't have any leakage through any drains that are open, that I don't have any significant water accumulation, and that I have a pathway to my emergency receiver and it is building pressure. I'm going to complete my pathway to my diesel generators and I'm going to let this run and monitor it uh, at some point. Maximum pressure is about 30. Uh, I'll need at least 15 uh, bar to be able to start the diesel generators. Um, my next step, prepare start the auxiliary seawater system, MD01. So uh, I have two places where I can draw raw water in from. I'll choose the low suction. I have an auxiliary pump. I'm going to feed water through my diesel generator coolers and I'll have an overflow valve as well as a recirculation valve. So I've started up my water system. I have a next step which is prepare the fresh water system. I'm going to skip that for now as it's going to come and play later in the startup and I'm gonna go and start looking at my diesel generator. So I'll go to page 75 and start up diesel generator number one. Uh, I'm gonna check my lube oil level. It appears to be a little low so I can add some lube oil. I'm 
maybe about 50% sounds good. My pressure is still building. It'll need to be at least 15 in order for me to start, I believe. If I follow through my lube oil system, I'm going to have a pump. Um, I'm going to turn this guy on and uh, I'll turn him into auto so he'll continue to build pressure. Don't have any flow in my system. Uh, I'll need to create a pathway through a filter and that will allow flow through my lube oil system. I can confirm that my cooling water system has flow. So I have some flow going through that system. I'll turn on my preheater on my diesel generator so it's going to start to warm up some of the coolant. Normally you would want to make sure that this has completely warmed itself up. Um, we may start it before we have meet or met our normal operating condition. Our fuel system, um, we're going to start from our tank that we're going to pull fuel from. It's over on number five. It's our diesel oil service tank. I've got a emergency shutoff valve from the tank as well as a supply valve to the diesel generator. And if I continue through my pathway, uh, I have a shutoff valve, a pump, and then a series of filters. You'll note my pump is not running. I can't activate it. Um, the symbol shows that it is a shaft and pulley driven pump, which means that it's going to be driven by the rotation of the engine. I have a minute here to check on my air pressure. It's going to be a, a few seconds before it's able to start. You can note my coolant temperature has gone up by seven or eight degrees. Um, still not very warm. Um, I may hold off if I was starting up my engine correctly until I'd met uh, at least a minimum coolant temperature. When I do have my generator finally start it, uh, I will be connecting it electrically. So my diesel generator will run. I will turn on its voltage control. And we will complete our pathway so that it ultimately is supplying my emergency bus. I can see I've got over 15 bar now. Uh, I'm in local mode, no trips showing, and I will start my generator. My generator normally operates at approximately 900 RPM. And I can see that I have just over 900 RPM. I got a alarm that shows. This alarm is telling me I have a low temperature in my lube oil system, which I can expect because I haven't had any warm-up of my system, so pre-warming. Temperature looks like it's rising, so that should go away. Ideally, I would want hot coolant and hot oil before I start up my engine. 
I'm going to jump ahead and connect it under load, but once again, I would want to make sure that all of my parameters are in the normal operating range before I put this generator under load. So my DG1 is running. The generator is producing 440 volts. Looks like it's suitable to connect to the main bus. I'm going to use semi-auto synchronization for that. So DG1 which tells me it's ready and I will connect. My breaker has connected. In addition, I'd like to supply power to my emergency bus bar so that I'm not relying on my emergency generator and I can do so by clicking breaker in. I had another alarm that came up. This would be my coolant temperature. Uh, again, because it's not up to operating temperature just yet. You can note that my cooling water supply seems to be being reduced. If I go back to my seawater system number one, you can note that my seawater pump turned off, also indicated by a low pressure alarm. The reasoning for that is that when I connected my emergency bus, that was not a smooth transition. It was a sudden switch from system to system, which meant I may have had a momentary loss of power. Momentary losses of power means some equipment might turn themselves off and I'll need to make sure I restart them. So things that may have been affected might have been my cooling water pump, here it might be my cooling water pump if you had your low temperature or high temperature pump on that may be one as well as sometimes your air compressor may turn itself off it appears it is running due to the indication that it is drawing power right now uh, we got two more steps which is to engage the breakers on the starter and feeders panel, so 71 and 72, uh, which would mean to continue to turn on all of my breakers, okay. including my pathway down for my transformer and the rest. I won't do them all right now for the sake of time. And then as well, 